The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Hail to the king, baby. Boy! The plan is, kill the brain, and you kill the ghoul. Welcome to hell. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. <laughs> Welcome to prime time! Ha! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Podcast in the Back Seat. I am your humble host, Matthew A. Hutton IV, and today I'm joined with... Uh, Wayne Alexander, third Esquire, Von Stappen, whatever, I think that's what we did in the last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, your, um, your cohort co-host. Um... <laughs> For this <a> special episode, <laughs> and I say special because they're all special. Oh. Everyone is special, which also means that nobody is special in the expression. <laughs> was it, um, somebody said it once, it was like, if everybody's Han Solo, then nobody's Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Or uh, Monty Python, you're all different, you're all individuals. I'm not. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, a little a little bit of uh, a factoid from that one is apparently he went from being an extra to a speaking role, so he got paid more money. I says, ah, oh, it was a It's like, you're all individuals. I'm not. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. No, that's probably uh, one of the, the funniest uh, movies ever made. The Life of Brian, if you're I not know. sure what we're talking about. Oh, it's it's such a phenomenal film. Mm. And people just assume I've watched um, quite in-depth conversations where it was members of the clergy opposite Michael Palin and oh, John yeah. Cleese. Yeah. Have you seen that, that, we're, that famous yeah, interview? phenomenal. Oh god, yeah. There's there's one where everybody expected John Cleese to kick off, and you can see he's backed off because Michael Palin's having a proper go at this priest. <laughs> he's like, "Enjoy your thirty pieces of silver." He's like, "I will." If you actually watch the film, we said Jesus Christ existed and was a divine being. <laughs> like, not once did we go against the the Bible. I know <laughs> exactly, and that, that's that's really really for us. It's just people taking offence for the sake of being yeah. offended. And I think there's, there's a lot of it. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it at some point in one of our conversations about like horror films being construed as being offensive. Yeah. I don't think that was the intent whenever the movie was made. It's people just take offence, and it doesn't mean that you're. I think as Stephen Fry said, just because you take offence doesn't mean that you're right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But the life of Brian's phenomenal as far as like comedy is concerned, but also it's very. They're clearly well understood at yeah. the time and the era and everything else, and they just say like, and that's why it's funny are... because it, it points out the the atrocities of the past. Actually, when you see those people, that guy Michael Palin again, hung upside down, mm-hmm. talking about how lucky <laughs> the sun shines out yeah. their arse and all that. You lucky you bastards! Lucky, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> they must think the sun all... shines out your arse. <laughs> <laughs> Crucifixion's too good for him. <laughs> but that's the sort of thing they used to do. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Because it, it, what it portrays, and it's quite, it's quite. I never knew about it until watching and looked into it a little bit more, and that's how they would have done it. Which is, it wasn't just one person. I like, got oh, one a day. No, no, there was dozens of people strewn across. Yeah. Um, Mount, Mount Sinai. Uh, yeah, it sounds about right. And the, um, the people's front of Judea, uh, Ju- Jesus Christ, the people's front of Judea did exist as well. Uh, uh, the instead of the Judean people's front. Yeah. Bloody. Bloody splitters! Oh, the the, <laughs> was it the the popular front splitter. Popular, yeah. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, but, oh yeah. but yeah, it's such such a such a great movie and so so well done. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to be spat at in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky, lucky, lucky bastard! <laughs> or the bit where he comes out of the spaceship and that guy out of nowhere just <laughs> turns up and goes, "Ooh, you lucky bastard." <laughs> <laughs> that has to be on it. even um, now I'll still get belly laughs watching it and I was trying to think oh, of, of like funny movies of recent, of recent times it's very difficult but if you think of all think time it, yeah like I think it depends I think I think humor they were quite dark and, and interesting and progressive to a certain extent because it wasn't obvious you just had to kind of go along for the ride and just yeah. be like these guys are being super weird and I love it like the the Piranha Brothers for a start, yeah. phenomenal. Absolutely one of my favourite sketches. Um, all of them, they're just absolutely brilliant. Confuse a cat. So <laughs> <laughs> so I was afraid of a giant hedgehog. Uh, and I can't just, believe so... this is the second show in a row we've mentioned Monty Python. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's because it's it's comedy genius. It I is. absolutely adore 
people who decided that I'm going to go and do something as weird as that. Yeah. And it must have been quite difficult for anybody who was in the footlights. And correct me if I'm wrong, they were in the footlights. Yeah. Um, and like Oxford or Cambridge. And then there's other people that then followed on afterwards. And like, how difficult they're going. Yeah. You gotta follow John Cleese and the rest. Of it. It's just like what? Mind you, they they Absolutely. followed the likes of Spike Milligan, um, and mm-hmm. if you've ever seen any oh, of yeah. his stuff, it's 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 like Monty Python, but fine tuned. It's it's really a lot of it you might not be able to watch now, but if you actually know <laughs> anything about Spike Milligan, you see why. If, and I won't mm-hmm. go into it because again, this isn't very political or whatever. Um, but he's he's hilarious. He's he's another one. If you listen to the Goons. That's a radio mm-hmm. show from like the, the 40s. <laughs> Sometimes and they're still hilarious. <laughs> but uh, I love Spider oh, yeah. and he's like my favourite human. <laughs> I see, yeah, there's, there's quite a few of them as well. Like, I was so. Just, just thrown it, like taken aback by them in a good way whenever yeah. I was a kid and going, like, who are these weird individuals? <laughs> going, saying... like, I wanted to find them more and more because it's, it's one of those ones that gets so quoted. They're going, would you like a waffle? Oh, it's, it's waffle. Thing. But no, I, uh, fuck, I actually got to meet. Fuck off, I'm full. <laughs> fuck off, I'm full. I, I got to meet Michael Palin once when I was a lot younger, and I got him to sign my. Uh, uh, I had a at the time VHS version of it was the Holy Grail. Mm-hmm. But I always remember he did this his own thing called it was ripping yarns, which if you've not seen, it's hilarious. It's only six episodes, mm-hmm. and John Cleese does feature on one of them, and Terry Jones co-wrote it so you, you know mm-hmm. it's going to be good but and um, one of the extra features he sat there talking about his influences and he actually gets to interview Spike Milligan and he's, he's right. like Milligan was his hero and you can see Michael Palin's just in massive awe and he's like oh, I got to meet um, one of the other goons members who I've actually forgotten the name of and he said, I-, I did an impression of his character and I felt like such a fool. And Spike Milligan just goes, oh yes, I remember he came up to me and said, I just met that Monty Python fellow. He's such a fool. <laughs> 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 you can see Spike Milligan blush. I don't know where. <laughs> Who, this, this comedy god feels inferior to this other guy. It, it's incredible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is not a comedy show. <laughs> no, this is not. Well, well we, we try to make it light. Um... So what what are we here for this week, Matt? Oh, yeah, well, this week's episode is actually a well, it's a review episode, and it was one of the ones that you yourself chose. Um, I, don't, I don't want to give my opinion just yet, but it's the 1998. I did look into it. Deep Rising. Yeah, uh, 1998. Deep Rising, uh, directed by Stephen Summers, prior to him going off and doing The Mummy, mm. uh, and and sort of a selection of other movies that he's done since then. Um, but yeah, it's a few few little facts about it before we kind of jump into it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a sneaky um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy re- reference to it. Um, Does it? <laughs> it's one of Roger. It's one of Roger Ebert's most hated movies. Oh, really? and I I absolutely adore Roger Ebert, who is kind of like a like a like an idol to me, like a man who got to. Um, review movies for a living and he didn't see it as being a job and despite the fact obviously his, his failing health as he got older still managed to like review like two movies um, a week which is just phenomenal he just enjoyed it and he sort of he made it more accessible to the other people so in this regard I kind of disagree with him because I think this is such a fun movie mm-hmm. but it was one of Roger Ebert's uh, most hated films came out a month after Titanic oh really so that uh, with, yeah. the, with the themes that we'll get into as well uh, I'm being sworn at uh, <laughs> off camera, which is, <laughs> which is why I look distracted. I'm sorry. Um, it's fine. But yeah, what, was it was a one year after Titanic. Oh, it's uh, maybe I've miswritten it. I think it was in '97 is when Titanic came out. I think this came out in '98. You're correct. Oh. Uh, but it came a year after Titanic, so That's obviously crazy. you're going to have some sort of um, unfortunate comparisons <laughs> yeah. with James Cameron's epic historically. <laughs> Quite a bit inaccurate story. Yeah. Um, but it's a lady I've got a, duel in the oceans. Yeah, in the oceans. I've got a, a sort of odd. It, it's not terribly interesting, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, I got dragged or drug, whatever, to see uh, Titanic. You got drugged. I got drugged, <laughs> and then 
and you woke up with a condom on your bottom <laughs> and you had one of your kidneys removed you're lying in, a, in a travel lodge or a you know whatever with one of your kidneys missing <laughs> <laughs> with a, a friend that ah! I've mentioned multiple, <laughs> multiple times uh, we'll, we'll call him Mr. Drew uh, who for some reason because he's, he's very similar to myself and I've, I've mentioned him to yourself as well um, mm-hmm. in the past the, the thing is, he, he absolutely loves the, the Titanic as, not the movie, but the, the Titanic. He just finds it mm-hmm. fascinating. What happened was obviously a, it was awful to a lot of people. But aside from that, he likes the <laughs> film as well. He decided to drug me and then take me to go and see it when it was re-released. Very, it was right. a little while back now, uh, but it was in 3D, back when 3D started to kick off again in a big way. And I remember at the time thinking, this is about this is three hours. I, I, I don't care. It's a love story. I was so mad. Like, I was, I was going to have to <laughs> go and see this boring, in my opinion, film. Sat down, and all of a sudden, you got to see the actual wreck. Now, you know what James Cameron's like. You've seen, probably, the film itself. You, the, the wreck come out of the abyss, because I'd never seen it before. And this is the real wreck, but in 3D. And it was amazing. The 3D on it was the best 3D I've ever seen. For those bits alone, if you were to remove the whole Jack and Rose bullshit, it would have been an amazing documentary about the Titanic in 3D. <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> Someone did. She's hogging the door. <laughs> He's just trying to nip off back to America. Doesn't get to see his family again. And Lake with soda or something yeah. like that. He was. Jack, Jack's dead. I'll be he doesn't get to be the Wolf of Wall Street. He doesn't get to start off like the uh, the airline. My yeah, uh, uh, my fucking. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was saying it was amazing visually. It is to see the actual wreck, and you know, the three mm-hmm. D worked on it really well because it's black background. You see the wreck come in. It was kind of daunting, and then mm-hmm. my interest just pitted out after that because the amount of times they say Rose and Jack in that movie. If you play the Rose and Jack drinking game, you're going to die. I'm sure there's a scene where mm-hmm. one of them just walk around going Rose. Rose, it's like, oh, what Rose. else am I going to say? Rose, <laughs> oh, this is quiet. Uh, Rose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but what? There's, there's two bits of that that movie I genuinely enjoyed. Mm. So Billy Zane from Demon Knight from uh, Tales from the Crypt movie yeah. is quite good in it. He's he's a proper bastard. Yeah, he is. proper prick. Running about, everybody's dying. He doesn't get a shit. He's he doesn't give so a shit. underused. He's getting off because he's a good actor. He's getting off. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He's gonna walk around fucking shooting people <laughs> in a in a in a in a, in a flooding ship, as backed up by David Warner from Time Bandits and Tron. David Warner. I was trying uh, to remember his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's also brilliant in. Uh, <laughs> is it the third or is it the? Se- I think it's the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, he is. Yeah, it's the same. He's in that. He's like yeah. a fucking scientist that creates bebop and rock study. That was how I uh, um, I was introduced to David Warner. So whenever I saw him in like the Omen, I always thought he was the guy at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the bit he wants to be forgotten about. Yeah. But I want to be remembered for being in the Omen and in sort of <laughs> Bandits and Tron and other phenomenal films that he's been in. I think he's in uh, Penny Dreadful. I think he's he? Van Helsing in it. Yeah. Oh wow, he'd be um, alright at that. Oh, he's in uh, he, Wax Worlds as well. Uh, is it Waxworks or? I don't think it's Wax World. I think Wax Museum. Up West World and Wax Museum. Yes, yeah, uh, the first one because the second one is definitely worth a watch, but the, the first one he's the best bit about it, to be honest. Uh, but yes, Deep Rising. Uh, <laughs> Deep Rising, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I reckon the Titanic is a poor man's Deep Rising. I, I would agree, uh, actually. Yeah, <laughs> Deep Rising is Titanic with a, a plot that you care about. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit about them two. People hogging the door, giving us a chance to live, you limey bastard. Fucking, I'll stuff. never forget their names, though. Jesus, Rose and fucking Jack. I actually forgotten there for a second. Makes us think of was it, there was an old Citroen or was it a Red Rover? Uh, Nicole Papa. That sort of makes me think of oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um... But yeah, really? just just a just a very fun movie. I think normally whenever we do a review, we, we basically sit and pick apart the sights and the sounds and mm. bits and pieces that happen through. I don't think we're going to do that with this one. I think we're just going to have like a bit of a laugh and just talk about a fun yeah. that, a film that is so fun fun fun. Yeah? <laughs> fee five full fun. It's fee five full fun. That, that's, that's what you possibly yeah. do for like some sort of giant <laughs> horror film. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's got a Jack and the Beanstalk past. of Death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, question: uh, 
what would you think about maybe putting a horror film within the confines of um, of the Titanic or the wreck of the Titanic? What if if what like deep sea divers going in looking for? Or they they rose the Titanic in order to like get go through what happened and everything mm. else, and basically you don't fuck with the ghosts of these deep dead fuckers. That'd be uh, cool. And that that yeah. that'd be quite cool, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I think there's a movie called Raising the Titanic, or mm. um, where they where they bring it back up out of the water. I think David Warner was in one of those Titanic movies, aside from the one where he was in, directed by James Cameron. Oh wow! But um, but that 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 would be quite cool. It'd be like Ghost Ship. Um, which I think you can't mention Ghost Ship without mentioning Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah. Cause I think it's very much like a very similar thread, high concept, uh, high CGI, obviously good cast and everything else. But she's, which is, but I've, I enjoyed both of those films. Yeah. It might be one that if we ever did like a review or if we did like of that era, yeah, they're, they're quite well done and they're quite slick. Well, and, they sort and, of remind me of this fun. actually like, of Deep Rising mm-hmm. to a degree, but a very different tone. But mm-hmm. the, as you were saying, the, the sight and sounds thing was actually quite hard to pick apart because this was my first viewing. When I was yeah. sat watching it, it was it, I was just, and I'm going to give my opinion immediately. I loved it. I thought it was <laughs> great. <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot of fun. Class, yeah, it? it's really. It is. And when you said that it was the the guy who later went on to do the mummy, I can tell he has a very yeah a very similar signature or, or tone. <laughs> Not just because he uses one of the actors in it as well. Uh, the guy plays Benny, is it? Uh, Kevin J. O'Connor, yeah. I think is the name of the the character. Which makes me think, is it um, Otto Connell is the name yeah. of the character from um, the Mummy movies. But the music is very similar. He's yeah. got a very same visual style about things panning out and going back in again. But I think he uses the same composer. Yeah. Um, I think he writes a lot of his own stuff and directs it. Um, but so, what what was your, what did you know about it prior to watching the movie? Honestly, I didn't even know it existed. I think it was <laughs> something you'd, you'd mentioned once before. Uh huh. And uh, I think you were surprised even when because we were talking about it uh, when you were saying you should watch this, and I was trying to find where I could watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you were surprised that I I hadn't, or I. I I think you even thought I mentioned it once. When the, honestly, mm-hmm. that was the first time I'd even I'd even heard about it. So I knew I literally I was, nothing. Go on, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say I was a little bit surprised because you're such a um, uh, an aficionado, <laughs> that word, uh, of uh, monster and kaiju movies. <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh, he's going to love a good monster movie, and this is one of my favorite movies. A friend of mine, and if he's listening, Steve. Um, it's just recently watched on View of Demand that Kong vs. Godzilla movie. He oh, told yeah. me nothing about it. Nice. He says it's incredibly fun. Mm. He says it's no Deep Rising, though. Oh, really? Oh. So I think, I think f- as much as I don't think he classes like the Universal Monster movies, but I think he's like, it's, I think it's his favourite monster movie. Oh, nice. And, I'd, and I'd, I'd, I'd agree with him. Like, I watched this and I think if, this is how I kind of knew that. Mm. The friends that I've got now were going to be my friends. <laughs> I think we ended up mentioning Deep Rising at one point. Going, F- I fucking love Deep. <laughs> it's such a fun film. I got it in like, I think I rented it from Extra Vision, which is a subsidiary of Blockbuster, which um, R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, no longer exists, except in our hearts. Mm. <laughs> um, such fun memories of yeah. blockbusters, to be honest. Here. Yeah, blockbusters. <laughs> but going into extra vision, like, and they, like, they had like not a bargain bin, but like mm. a lesser rented bin next to the thing going deep rise, and it was like a sunset and some like watery going. It's like Titanic on crack cocaine, methamphetamine, <laughs> fucking whatever it is. <laughs> Cracked um, cocaine. It's like it's like speed meets Titanic, and I'm just going fuck it. You want know I mean? Yeah. You know what? That that, that alone. <laughs> I like speed, and I go on. It's like, it's like a fun um, dun, 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 all that sort of music kind of going on in the background <laughs> meets Titanic, um, with some cast that I kind of seen beforehand, and I think I had a bit of a thing for Funky Janssen. Um, I think after watching like the X Men movies and a couple of other bits and pieces, she was also in Goldeneye. Yeah, as uh, something on a top, I think her name is. Um, I honestly, I'll rent this. I watch it. I think I watch it like four times in like, <laughs> nice. two days, and then had to return it the day after. <laughs> oh, that was uh, that was the best thing about it. Blockbusters. You, because I remember getting oh, the first Austin Powers and Blockbusters, and I watched it about four mm-hmm. times again before giving it back because you knew mm-hmm. you only had it for a week or however long. 
But no, you, you mentioned that actress. Um, I've forgotten her name already. Frankie Jensen. Yeah, I honestly feel as though she seemed to be really uh, well used a lot around about this time, and then just mm-hmm. disappeared. Like, where's she think, like, yeah. now? She's a great actress. <laughs> I'm just surprised. <laughs> She she has done other things, maybe just lesser sort of note. Obviously, she I think the last big thing that she was in was probably like X Men Three, which, yeah. for want of a better word, is possibly maybe why. Yeah. Uh, I could I, I I I don't maybe get as to why it's the case, but I think she's done. She's got like a, a solid body of work and everything else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think she was just really really cool, and I think she seemed to have fun. She was she replaced Claire Forlani. Who was in Morlo- uh, Mall Rats? Um, right. She is oh, Michael Rooker's daughter in Mall Rats, yeah. directed by Kevin Smith. And she was originally in it, and I think she dropped out, and then Famke Janssen then stepped in. Fair. Um, uh, that's the thing yeah, I think- about X Men 3. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm a huge comic fan, but I'm not amazing on X Men. But I really enjoyed the Phoenix thing. So when I th- when I heard her especially, who's the best Jean Grey you could have possibly ever picked, was going to be the Phoenix, so I was like, I'm in. Went to the pictures, yeah. and by the end of it, I was like, oh, I fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> not not her fault. Yeah. I think the story was weak as all, but I think there was there was a lot of different bits and pieces involved, and that was a lot of kind of studio interference and everything yeah. else, uh, which which is always going to be the case. It wasn't she um, in faculty as well? She was. She's yes. the. She's like the the dowdy. Uh, what's that movie called with Freddie Prince Jr.? Um, it's not. The oh, Rachel Lee Cook could be wrong. It's not something. Hmm. It's not Jennifer Jason Lee. It's J- J- uh, Jason Lee Cook. Uh, oh, fuck. What's her name? Rachel Lee Cook. Hmm. And it's called like. Uh, oh, was it? It's not. There she goes. It's like we're the, the dowdy one. They've got the paint and the yeah. hair, and they've got the. They've got the, the thick milk bottle glasses oh, and everything I, else. All of a sudden, not another take the glasses movie, off her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then the, 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 they let her hair down, they put a red dress on her, bang, everybody's, you know, massively into her, and then you've got, like, sixpence and on the richer playing in the background. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the shit. Uh, playing in the background. Yeah, that's what they kind of did. And she was the dowdy teacher of the faculty. And all of a sudden, she's this smoke on hot Eastern European lady who's looking for something cherry. Um, something tasty, <laughs> and she's she's proper fun in that movie, and I think that's what she she brings to the movie. Yeah, she's fun. Um, she she brought the same. That's what you want, I think. And yeah, I, I feel like they, in a, in a way, if I'm being <laughs> utterly like completely honest, they underused her in Deep Rising. She yeah. she was the 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 sort of cool spy, not even spy, just thief. Like she was going in, she was trying to I don't know steal whatever it was <laughs> she was trying to steal. And she just fell into the role of sidekick, and it was a bit like, oh, I kind of wish she carried it a bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yes, it's definitely, definitely fun. I think I would, I would possibly agree with you. Maybe underused. Hmm. Um, I would love to know, like they've done this like Snyder cut, and like, there's just, like, <laughs> loads of different bits and pieces. I would love to see if there's like a like a three hour long deep rising cut with there's extra bits and pieces because apparently. <laughs> Uh, and another good friend of me, a, a different Stephen, um, who possibly might be listening to the show, said that they, they did so much footage for Planes, Trains and Automobiles. It's like a four-hour cut Oof. of just Steve Martin and John Candy just letting rip. And that would be amazing. I would love Why to see that movie. Why did they ever cut that? That, that sounds like the <laughs> best know. four hours. <laughs> I know, because I love that movie. It's so good. Yeah. And I remember like... The only bit I remember about that movie, and I'm sorry for going off on a tangent, is the, the, the <laughs> bit my dad made me watch again and again. Uh, and I think I can't help every time I see John Candy, see my, my dad a little bit, because he was just so fun and, and out there and everything else. Um, but so Barry says, oh, I've got my hand in between these two pillows, and I go on, those aren't two pillows. <laughs> and then when he ever gets into bed, he's like washing his hands in the sink and it's just full of dirty socks. And it's not that my dad ever did that. Yeah. <laughs> I think my dad did sport a fucking horrible tash in the 80s <laughs> in the army. Um, with little speckles of ginger, which I essentially, essentially get every now and again if I let my beard grow to a certain length. Mm-hmm. Start looking like Peter Sutcliffe. And I think you've also been compared to looking like Peter Sutcliffe. <laughs> yeah, by you. I, I, I know. <laughs> I don't care what anybody <laughs> said. He's a fantastic truck driver. <laughs> he, he got hammered though. Actually, no, he didn't. 
So uh, <laughs> he did. Did he do the hammering? I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll step away from that. Um, he died. Yeah, he, said, um, didn't he? he did. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll maybe step away from that. A bit, a bit, I sort uh, of jumped back into it. For some reason, sorry. <laughs> Actually, one last thing on Peter Sutcliffe. Sorry, guys. Uh, I write for a London newspaper as well um, called Psychic World. Look look for it if you want. If you're that way inclined, I do the book reviews for it. I'm the, mm-hmm. the sceptic. And um, apparently, a, a, fan, sorry, a few celebrity fans I have, or had, uh, one of them was the, the lady who played uh, Pauline Fowler in EastEnders. Forget her name. She was in a couple of other things. The other one was Peter Sutcliffe. <laughs> So, if you want to like people that Peter Sutcliffe liked, like the show. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> we are experiencing some technical difficulties. Please enjoy this government-sanctioned joke. Where are an elephant's sex organs? They're on their feet. Because if they stand on you, you're fucked. The government did not sanction this joke. This was all an elaborate ruse. And we're back in the room. Nice. Cool. Um, Yeah, so what were we talking about before we got cut off? By those those bastard gremlins again. Which, uh, which you mentioned one of the earlier shows, uh, a complete horror version of that would be the greatest thing. Uh, It's been buzzing in my head since you've said it. I honestly feel like that's something we should... We should do. We should totally rip off Spielberg. Get sued. <laughs> get in the papers. <laughs> and then what you do is you write something. What you do is you do. <laughs> you do one. So <laughs> now that we're saying we should get ourselves into any legal bother, because I'm sure he is lawyered up to fuck. <laughs> Mr. Spielberg, I love you. For, for 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 only one thing. Not that you said that your other body work isn't phenomenal, but solely for Jaws. And oh I think yeah, myself and and, and uh, Matthew and everybody else just goes. Thank you for making the water fucking terrifying. <laughs> you, I, there's a, you there's a couple man. of par- <laughs> you sexy bastard. There's uh, some parallels to Jaws and Deep Rising as well. Um, obviously, and uh, and, a t- and a ton of other horror movies, yeah. action movies, and everything else. It's just it's the thing is all. with Spielberg and Jaws, right? Yeah. You can't set anything in the sea anymore without immediately thinking of Jaws. Like, especially if there's something in it. Like the, in Deep Rising, spoiler alert: the whole point of it is there is there's a creature or creatures, creature I guess in the the sea. Mm-hmm. You're already thinking of Jaws, and I've just said the title Deep Rising, so <laughs> stop it, you naughty. <laughs> I know, but yeah, it's it's oh, it's it's just there's so many little. Little mishmashes of, of different um, movies that are thrown in there. There's um, I'm trying to think of the, the 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 thoughts that I have afterwards. So it's got it's got a bit of the fly in there because somebody gets melted with acid, which is fucking so, so much good. Fun. <laughs> You've got Jurassic Park. Because obviously it's like the, like the, the you kind of hide the shark or you hide the monster and kind of until later on in the movie, and it's what's going on around. It's about everybody else's reaction to what's happening. Yeah. You've got aliens because it's a bunch of like. Soldiers or mercs or whatever that happens through the course of the movie. Yeah, You've got a speed two, which I don't know whether it came out before or afterwards. I think it came out possibly a little bit before. Mm. Uh, the Poseidon Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, God. <laughs> Titanic, The Abyss. It's a bit of a, a heist movie. It's got Jaws. It's got Tremors in there because they kind yeah. of. It's it doesn't explicitly state it, but. It's almost like they find you with with sound, yeah. Rather than physically seeing you, because it's just big tentacled <laughs> warthog type thing. Um, <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. I just uh, that the CGI itself as well actually holds out okay. Like, I'm it's, I'm not one that that because I'll I'll play vintage games or retro games or whatever as well because I don't really care if things look amazing, but if they look too bad, especially in a film. I can't get away with it. Look at like the Mummy Two, with uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson as a scorpion. Him, him, I, I adore the Rock because he's just he's like uh, there's a there's a famous uh, comedian called Ron Funches, mm. and and he basically says that the Rock is Beyonce for boys. It's true, actually. I, I follow him on Twitter, and one of the best things I ever saw was that his uh, his gates to his mansion 
um, cut out and just wouldn't open when he wanted to drive back home. Mm -hmm. So he showed the before where the gates were locked and the after where he himself tore the bastards out of of the wall. (laughs) Did you see where he dresses the the Hulk for Halloween? Oh, no. No. He dressed like the Hulk and he's just covered in green paint, green wig, and there's some shredded clothes going on. (laughs) That's the Hulk in real life. <laughs> uh, a little, um, it, this is probably very quite well known. Uh, in the Bill Bixby version of the Hulk, um, the TV show, which is still phenomenal. It's so good. Um, such a good TV show. And everything he's else the absolutely adorable. best banner. He's amazing. Bill Bixby's under, he's one of my favourite actors as well because he's hilarious, but go on. Yes, um, <laughs> but in the Hulk TV show, um, Lou Ferrigno played the Hulk in obviously he's, 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 he just played this massive brute he's of a man awesome as well and in the comic books prior and since the Hulk speaks it's obviously very pared down it's very simplistic obviously becomes more and more kind of intelligent as, as the sort of possibly as the comic books and the, and the movies go on mm-hmm. but the reason why Hulk doesn't speak in the TV show is because Lou Ferrigno was born deaf yeah yeah um, but obviously he's then he's overcome that which is absolutely phenomenal um but yeah, and he, he works in was it, um, King of Queens. Mm-hmm. He's in I Love You Man, which is a really fun film. Uh, but he just overcame that. And even he has a is a cameo in The Incredible Hulk, where he's the security guard that yeah. Edward Norton gives him the pizza to. Yeah. Uh, he's in the, just... the first one as well, the Ang Lee one. He's with Stan Lee. They both walk out and uh, Stan Lee talks to him as, as a security guard to say that they should beef up security. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never watched. It. It's possibly because I've not revisited that particular it's, yeah. movie. <laughs> it's because, yeah, it, it was just a bit, and, and not to poo-poo. Like obviously, it's a lot of time and effort and everything else. It's just a very artsy movie for what is essentially a comic book movie. Yeah. I think it was too kind of intellectual for people, especially and the Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk, and yeah, and it was the whole idea that, um, yeah, it was just sort of. It, it, I appreciate anybody's taken the time and the effort and the money oh, yeah. and everything else in order to go. Out. But a Taiwanese man, because I think Ang Lee's from Taiwan, yeah, um, doing the body acting of the yeah. Hulk. He is not a physically imposing man. Um, then doing can, the body you acting, you can sort of is, tell as well. Yeah. sadly in the, the film. <laughs> but do you know the uh, the Bill Bixby uh, Hulk series as well. Originally, they wanted to cast it was Arnold Schwarzenegger as well as the Hulk, cool. um, which would have had him talking a lot more as well. But obviously, I think at that point he just became Mr. Universe, I think, or something mm-hmm. happened, he might have got another part. Mm-hmm. And I honestly feel like that was a, a blessing in disguise. Ferino or Ferigno, Ferigno yeah. is, is f- perfect in it. He doesn't throw one punch. He throws a lot of people, but <laughs> he doesn't throw one punch because he weren't allowed to do that at the time. And I always remember there was a great um, interview with Stan Lee mm-hmm. and Kevin, is it Kevin Smith? Uh, Kevin Smith yes. in, interviewing Stan Lee and he says to him why did they change Bruce Banner's name to David Banner in the TV series and this is yeah. the God's honest truth so don't I know send this, in your yeah, complaints no. yeah apparently they changed his name to David Banner because Bruce sounded too homosexual it's, what it's, times it's, it's, <laughs> I don't even like alright like, sort of, yeah and that's unfortunate because the, the Stan Lee was famous for like a, a like alliteration yeah well, it's I wouldn't like, mind uh, that. Um, like Peter Peter Parker, Bruce yeah. Banner. There's absolutely well, loads. Bruce Reed Banner. Richards. Bruce Banner's actual name is Robert. Bruce is his middle name, so Bob Bruce Banner. That was the whole point. So if you really needed to change the name, just call him Robert throughout. But apparently, and again, you know, times have changed. Don't send us your hate mail. This is just what it was like in the eighties. <laughs> apparently, having a homosexual main character was a bad thing. Somehow, even though he wasn't, and it was a name. <laughs> the fuck's <laughs> no. going on? Like, uh, uh, people are weird. Just, I know. And j- <laughs> just to remind you, it's in a little sort of not so subtle segue. If you're going to not send hate mail and possibly send love mail, send it to your yeah. Instagram page at podcast in the back seat. I repeat that is at podcast in the back seat. <laughs> uh, send us love mail, not hate mail. We're all about loving movies rather than poo pooing or being exactly. towards them. Exactly. Um, I do want yeah. to uh, give a disclaimer as well. It wasn't Stanley's decision to change the name. He himself was actually an advocate for equal rights. That hence he actually wrote gay characters and things. I just want to put that out there because I love the man, and that's one of the reasons of why it was uh, Hollywood officials yeah. 
who I don't yeah. very much sometimes. So obviously, there's a lot of like allegories and stuff for the X Men representing different yeah. things throughout the, throughout the course of the years, which is phenomenal. Exactly. Um, which, as referenced in the the most recent Deadpool movie, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try and not get into that too much. We, we kind of want to stay away from from politics in any way, shape, hey, absolutely, we possibly absolutely. Can. I just don't. I don't want to badmouth the name of, of Stanley for that. So, I'll, uh, but yeah, Steve Risen, uh, we've gone on massive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but do, do you know what? That in itself is a testament to how Deep Rising is. It's so much fun that it pulls all these ideas together. That when you start to talk about Deep Rising, you inevitably start talking about other things. And not because you don't want to talk about Deep Rising. Just because it reminds you of when you also had such an enjoyable experience doing something mm-hmm. else or watching something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I did actually split it up into sight and sounds, but I'm not going to go into it that much. I really did enjoy the, the use of colour in that movie. Mm-hmm. I think there's a really nice shift in it where at the very beginning there's a lot of greys and uh, the sound couples with it as well. There's a lot of greys, a lot of um, mm-hmm. diegetic sort of sounds of, of like the, the sea and a lot mm-hmm. of things like that. And then all of a sudden when it cuts to the party and then when it cuts to everything kicking off, all of a sudden it's all brightly coloured. And most of the movie is very brightly coloured. Yeah, it, It's picturesque, it's beautiful. And the music itself becomes incredibly grand, mm-hmm. and that's it's, amazing. That's so good. That, that was one of the ones that I talked about, and I didn't write it down, but it should have. Like there's there's little, it's clearly like little nods to like almost Indiana Jones because it's like yeah. that um, Temple of Doom where it's got the musical number, but instead of having like, it's like the, the sort of like the the drums with the sticks. Yeah. In the Argonautica, which is really really cool, because um, it's sort of like set in the grand. The idea that oh, this 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 luxury liner is absolutely <laughs> rampacked with the richest people ever, uh, and all of a sudden, fast forward a little bit later on, like very quickly afterwards, all gone. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood seems to hate rich people, as well. I've noticed because for, for you know a bunch of rich people who make f- films about <laughs> other people. The, the, because I think that's what it is. Because the people who then go to see the movies, who then flock to the cinema to to rent the movies or buy them or whatever else or stream them or, or whatever it is that they, how they sort of absorb them, um, are they generally sort of like the, the yeah. public. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that it kind of references. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just such a film. So like Aliens, um, particularly because it's almost like Mercs to a certain extent, or like uh, yeah. the USMC or US. United States, USCM, United States Colonial Marines. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that it's such a it's a fun cast as well, which I wanted to touch on. Like it's a phenomenal cast. It's got yeah. Dijon Honsu. It's got Trent Williams, who I absolutely adore. I love the Substitute, but then there's a sequel to Substitute Two, which stars Trent Williams. And for me, I enjoy that movie better just because I like Trent Williams. And generally, you're in for a treat when you watch a Trent <laughs> Williams film. I always uh, thought you were in for a Williams. Because <laughs> he's in, oh, uh, what's it called? It's not dead to rights. It's dead. It's not dead set. There's a there's a horror action movie that he did with Joe Piscopo. No he's way. He's definitely not. Uh, <laughs> I've told you about it beforehand. He's, he's definitely not looking it up. It's one of those ones that completely... Uh, <laughs> It's just a, it's a phenomenal. It's called Dead Heat, uh, oh, which is right. loads of film where Joe Piscopo plays a character called Doug Bigelow. Uh, <laughs> but Dead Heat sort of does that quite. It's on Prime um, for anybody who's listening. It's available on Amazon Prime, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> Trey Williams' character in the movie is called Roger Mortis. <laughs> oh, no. so instead of rigor mortis it's Roger Mortis <laughs> it is an absolute treat to watch um, <laughs> but Treat Williams is, is, is phenomenal you've got Wes Duty who ends up uh, I think pre- prior to this ended up playing Sagat in the Street Fighter movie nice uh, but he also he did a lot of movies where he plays Native Americans yeah. uh, in movies instead of this kind of made him to be like the, the hard ass like captain of this yeah. entire group of mercs um, is he the one who who is a complete jerk even as he's dying? He, oh, he, has, yeah, he gets he gets a gun with one bullet left and he decides to try and kill someone else. Do you <laughs> know what? 
I'd probably do the same if I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. But, but as uh, it brings me out of the next one, it's like Anthony <laughs> Sands of the Lambs held. Um, he's in it as well, and he's he's phenomenal in Silence of the Lambs because he plays like a proper twenty-four carat prick. Yeah. In Silence of the Lambs, you're kind of quite glad that he gets he gets. It sort of hints at the fact that he's going to get eaten at the end of Silence yeah. of the Lambs because I'm having a friend for dinner and he's a friend. <laughs> Um, Famke Janssen Kevin J. O'Connor it's got the guy that played Kano from the, the Mortal Kombat movie as directed by uh, Paul W.S. Anderson it's got Cliff Curtis who's mm-hmm. went and did, did loads of amazing stuff Jason Fleming who was in like Lockstock uh, and he's done a bunch of other bits and pieces since then he's, he's like a guy Richie sort of uh, alumni oh, yeah. or alumnus um, but the cast is phenomenal. It's so well, the cast like that. Why is this film like? Why have I not heard of it? Why is people not making such a big deal about it? Like, because it's it shot up. Because I'm a huge kaiju fan, right? And this has jumped straight into the top ten immediately. And there's a lot of films in the the kaiju genre if you look into it. And I've seen most of them, sadly. I say that I'd not seen this, so you know, <laughs> maybe not. And it, it absolutely is a kaiju because the the creature, the reveal itself, which in itself is is beautiful, as well. When you get to see where all these these little bits are coming from, mm-hmm. I think it looks great. Mm-hmm. I really love that type of film, like because <laughs> it, it, it's not it's not usual. Yeah, like you, you look at the the predator, and which I was going to reference as well. There's there's a little for me, and maybe I saw it because I wanted to see it there, like getting mm. references to other movies, is about where you find all the, the bundled skeletons and they're all red. Oh, that's awesome, that scene. That makes yeah. me think of the scene in Predator where all like basically skinned alive and hanging yeah. from a tree. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not a sexy, slick looking monster. It's fuck ugly. It is. Yeah. It's supposed it's like, to be, though. It's, it's like a pig, pig octopus, or as I've called it, poctopus. Fuck. <laughs> Smart, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the octopus. <laughs> and there's bits of it I really, really enjoyed because it's like a reverse Aliens 3. Because Aliens 3, they kind of heard the alien towards where they wanted to go. Yeah. The the sea creature, the, the octopus, does the reverse <laughs> and it herds them to where it wants them to go. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's just fucking... Oh, I, f- I forgot to mention as well, the captain of the ship... It's also the name of the the surname is the same name as the director of photography. Oh really? Yeah, and nice. the guy who plays the captain of the ship is Foxstead from Lethal Weapon Two. <laughs> I'll get in. <laughs> the one that does the horrible things to people and he breaks yeah. into Danny Glover's house. He's got them all taped up and he's just got this quite for me, uh Quite well done, South African accent. He's probably butchering the accent in some way, shape, or form. But he's the captain. Yeah, uh, and, it, and he's got cool. like the mustache, and he's got like a, a sort of <laughs> almost like I was going to say like his hair is kind of all messed up and everything else. Yeah, and you go on. That's that's him. That's 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 from, <laughs> from Lethal Weapon Two. Okay, yeah, um, you have to correct me if I'm wrong as well. I've just <laughs> just now thought the the villain in this, and there are going to be spoilers. It is a review, so if, if you're not expecting spoilers, I'm sorry, but. The villain in this, the whole point is he's made this liner and insured it for a vast amount of money, took it out to the, the buttfuck of nowhere in, in this middle of the sea to have these marines then blow it up and claim the insurance money. I can't help thinking that if he just didn't build the liner and saved the money, he'd be alright. <laughs> it would be. It's time and effort. I don't know. But that, that sort of that sort of villain's plan, it's like the Scooby Doo villain plan. You, you want to tear down this building so you dress up as a ghost to scare out these teenagers. Just tear it down or set a fire. I don't know, do something practical. No, those are the best sort of villain plans where they're convoluted and make no sense when you actually think about it. And then he's strange enough happens, the guy who designed the, the cruise liner also happens to know about the creature in which habits the area in which they're cut yeah. through. That drinks somehow, people. and and that's terrifying. <laughs> that's, that's terrifying for that's me. Cool. Is that you, it 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 eats you, and then it drinks you. So yeah. you're probably still alive after it, you've been crushed a bit, possibly still struggling for breath, and then it drinks you. Yeah, there's no yeah. set time for when it is you're actually going to die because so very slowly you're yeah, being pulped it's... basically, and the flax being spat out. <laughs> like, oh, ah, yeah, that that like graveyardy a... bit with it, like as you mentioned, there the bright reds and that. 
that in itself would fit in some of the more gruesome horror films as well. Like if you had that room in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you would just think, oh, "That's Leatherface's wank room in it." Like it <laughs> would fit. Or <laughs> the old face of the leather has gone off to knock one out here. <laughs> <laughs> He's using the chainsaw. No, <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, it, it's it's something like I, we, we picked this as a horror film, but I think this is sort of this goes down the realms of, of action horror. Yeah, it's, definitely. Because it's just it's just a fun film. Like I don't think I watched this movie and was at any point possibly I tell a lie. I was potentially a little bit scared as a kid, and then mm. watching this, then you just realise, no, nah, no, this this is not what this movie is aiming for. Yeah. It's aiming for the fun action comedy, just um, like Aliens, uh, without the comedy, I guess. Uh, just like Aliens, it's not scary, I guess. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, <laughs> oh, I, don't know. I think as, a, as, a, as an adult watching Aliens, right. I just enjoy that it's the fun ride that it is. Unless you watch the director's cut, it just ramps up that tension. Just... The director's cut's so much better as well. And then, Actually, I'll, I'll tell you, as a kid, when I first saw the Queen Alien, I was my eyes widened a bit. Just the introduction to the Queen Alien with the heavy breathing. And the KY what, jelly hanging off the uh, teeth. We're, we're going <laughs> to review that, so I won't go into that because we've tangented it enough on this episode. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's a, for for aliens. It's about where they're coming through the ceiling. Oh, they're in the room. They're in the room. You just go on the ceiling. And there they are. Fuck. Yeah, true. Okay, That's it. we're totally fucked. You know what? Bill Pax is <laughs> right. We are totally screwed. Game over. That's it. We are over, ruined. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's just a fun. Fun movie yeah. references to loads of like, it, I think it for me personally it wears its heart on its sleeve. Yeah, it clearly wears its references. It's not trying to be subtle about it. It even yeah. references like a new um, rifle that they use in it, which is very similar to whenever they introduced the rifle from Aliens. Yeah, <laughs> pulse rifle. Oh, 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 we've got this waterproof, uh, self-cooling, ridiculous machine gun. That's Feel how light this is. Gun. Oh no, it's just unbelievable. Um, no. <laughs> I think you're right in what you are saying, though, because we're, we're not going to pick apart this film because it wasn't made to be picked apart um, in terms of sight and sound and things like that. Because we've the ones we've done in the past, like we did The Fog, Nightmare, these are well-crafted, they had a message. They This film itself, the message was, sit down, watch this, and just fucking enjoy it. And you yeah. do. <laughs> you can't pick it apart much more than that. I think I think whenever tell me if I'm wrong. Whenever I do like a review, and the ones that we've mentioned beforehand, like the fog, nightmare, uh, nightmare, uh, and a bunch of other ones that we've done since then, like I'll pause the movie and I'll make notes as I go along, or I'll try and like mm. hurriedly write stuff down and go, oh, I like that. I never noticed that beforehand. Oh, yeah. that's really clever. I wonder if that's a reference to something else that's happened. But this one, I just sat and watched the movie. I think I paused it once, possibly because I need to go for a wee. Uh, <laughs> I got myself some sort of snacks. <laughs> and, uh, a creepy kid, um, but this one I just sat and watched the movie and just just let it wash over me. Yeah. Um, if anybody is listening, it is available. I think it's on Disney Plus service Star. Yeah. Like we're trying to promote Disney uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's not what we're trying to do. It's just I believe it is available on there to to stream if you do yeah. subscribe to that particular service. Um. Um. I guess it'll be picking things apart. I liked. Obviously, you mentioned CGI beforehand, but there's quite a lot of practical effects that get used a lot in the mm-hmm. movie as well, which I think stands up quite well. Like that scene where they're going down the corridor, which I think is pretty much filled with blood, and the ceiling and the walls start crushing in. Oh, that's, that's so done. cool. Yeah. And it's obviously made with like tinfoil or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So he's just like running up with a shoulder along this like, kind of tinfoil wall. Like, oh, <laughs> no, we're going to make it through. Oh, they're totally screwed. It's so effective, though. Like it works really well. And if you were in that situation, because I, I like to try and put myself, that's why you get the horror element of it, I guess. When you look at it, if you were in a room that started crushing in like that, you'd absolutely poop. You would think, <laughs> what the, what the fuck, <laughs> poop. Uh, there's there's a couple of like I love the deaths in it as well. I yeah. love the movie has got some interesting deaths, and there's one of them. And tell me if you've seen it, Creep Show Two. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's that one called? It's like the. I think they made a movie into like like an entire movie rather than like the little. I don't even know if Creep Show's class is Portmanteau. Um, is it? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody wishes to correct us it's again, it's at our Instagram page at Podcast in the Back Seat. But I understand like it's like a couple of short stories tied together, and in, yeah. in the original one, it's like the kid reading the comic book. Yes. The second one, that's not in case. 
Uh, I don't believe that's the same for the sequel. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like the it's like the barge people where they go out. Oh, we're gonna go to this lake, and then they go on the pontoon. It's the bit where the guy gets pulled through the pontoon. Oh, that's horrible! Yeah. It's the woman who gets sucked down the shitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's again hiding the monster. This lady's hiding in the toilet. She's sitting on the toilet. You feel like you're safe. Yeah. You feel you're safe. That's where you want to feel safe. And what it does is it makes it. It, it, it acknowledges that fear that everybody has that what happens if something came up yeah. or your, your most vulnerable moment when you've got your your underwear down by your ankles or, <laughs> or by your knees depending on how you're feeling and how cold it particularly is or our Australian you, fans are like uh, this is every day man fuck off <laughs> I've got to fire a couple of warning shots down the U-Bend just in case anyone who tries to, <laughs> tries to tries to suck you down the bidet <laughs> a perfect control over this thing to <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> in case you need to run <laughs> in case of sort of like black mamba or some other sort of like articulated <laughs> python try to like cry, climb up inside you Australians I've heard and they correct me if I'm wrong uh, they have such a strong sphincter muscle due to exercise that they do that if a snake tries to leap up inside the body that they can clench down and then snap its neck off in the middle <laughs> <laughs> and then shit it out with the rest I know. oh god Come to pod- yeah. podcast yeah. in the back seat for a wonderful worldly insight on what you can do with your sphincter. Yeah, the sh- uh, <laughs> got a, you got a bit German with the sphincter. Your sphincter. <laughs> the sphincter. Fine, hunt sphincter. Uh, <laughs> but the anyway. uh, the lady who gets sucked down the sh- the sphincter. The sphincter. Um, <laughs> the sphincter. The, the hosen. She just got sucked down the toilet. And then she's got room full of blood. Yeah, I, I love that shot. That's very Sam Raimi as well, where. It cuts. You see her being pulled, and it's a jump cut to the wall, and then a splat yeah. of the blood on the wall. I love that sort of thing, and the the fact that the deaths are they're focused on as well. So each each person who dies gets a scene of them dying. Yeah. Which I know that sounds silly, but if you actually watch a, a horror film, especially in recent years, deaths and it's to make it more natural, which is fine. Um, they're, they're kind of they make they made a big deal of if you're a main character, but if it's a side character, which there's a lot of in this film, they mm-hmm. don't get their own scenes sometimes. They may get mm-hmm. cut while the main character is running away from them. Yeah. Where this one, every one of them, it, it's just like an action film. To be yeah. honest, as you say, it, it's it's a horror film done in the action style. You know what? I never thought of that beforehand because any side characters. So if you replace the monster, the octopus, <laughs> instead of it would be. John Rambo just emer- emerging from the bushes and then cuts the guy's throat and then pulls back in. But yeah. Instead, it's the monster. So exactly. you're you're concentrating on the, on the monster picking people off, and they're quite interesting and quite fun. And there's like little jump scares, like cables dropping down from the ceiling. Yeah. Whereas he's coming out of the he's coming out of the trees or whatever. But instead, it's this, <laughs> this octopus um, sucked down the sh- the shitter. Like the there's the head in the hole, which I thought was quite clever. Uh, it's almost maybe probably, possibly a reference to Jaws, with oh, the golden the look, and then yeah. it's, it's, it's the head, the head floating in the water. Um, well, it's still so one of the best the jump pipes. scares in any horror film as well. D- uh, film watching it, it filmed in a swimming pool in somebody's backyard. That's amazing. <laughs> watching it now, even I still jump because I, I expect it, and for some, it always seems to come before I remember it. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Same with me. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting back to you as well, obviously, about the practical effects and, the, and everything else that they use for the, yeah. for the vast majority of it. You can tell that they've, they've clearly built quite big sets. Yeah. And I think that's why it's aged quite well, is because it's not filmed. In, but not to, not to poo poo or, or be negative towards any sort of films where they are, they use a lot of CGI or a lot of green screen. Yeah. They've clearly built a, a set and then flooded it. I, I'm guessing it's because it came the year just after Titanic as well, but the scene where they're in the ballroom. That is clearly an entire set, and it had to be grand. And I think because it followed something like Titanic, whose sets, I know I just shit on the film earlier in this episode, the sets are beautiful in it. James Cameron is, is visually a very good director. But this movie as well, in the same way, I'm sure that one scene had 6,000 extras. Mm-hmm. That's an exaggeration. Maybe uh, I looked into it. It was six something, so six hundred maybe. Um, six, six. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, I think that may be why, because it followed something so grand, and because it was mm-hmm. in a similar setting, they kind of had to, which is fine. But mm-hmm. It looks amazing, and then when you get to see that room again, dishevelled and broken up, 
it's it's a beautiful contrast. Yeah, and what I was going to mention as well about the CGI is what I think they're quite they use the CGI sparingly because yeah. it's like they, they cut to the reaction as to what's going on because what you want to see is the reaction on their faces. Mm-hmm. Of, it's coming out of the wall, it's coming out of the ceiling, it's coming out of the extractor fan above the hob. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important as well because especially in action films in recent days or even in the past, mm-hmm. but in action horror, as this is, there is one slow-mo scene. And I noted that because I think that's important because slow motion, when you watch Resident Evil now, it's a great movie. I do actually mm-hmm. like it, but I think it's about 40% slow motion. This film has one scene and it's the the like an explosive or something going towards the, the monster. That's so you as an audience member can see the monster before it's about to blow up or whatever. And yeah, it looks I think that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's, re- it's really sort of really clever. I like the use miniatures in it as well. The clearly yes. use miniatures like a like an old school um, action movie because they couldn't oh. blow up a full building. They, they didn't have the budget, say Christopher Nolan does yeah. for say. With a blow up, what looks like a huge hospital in the Dark Knight, which I, I adore. Yeah. Um, but they've they've just blown up a miniature. And <laughs> I love that they've done that. But that that's a bit of a, a, a parallel to the likes of Godzilla and that that very famously used miniatures. Mm-hmm. Um, E.g. Subaru who was the guy who actually made them as well, and I, I read a, an interview with him where he'd spend weeks making a building to have mm-hmm. Harunakajima in a rubber suit smash it in three seconds and every time he did it he would always die a little inside his exact words I love I love the miniature things especially when they're done well because if you watch Deep Rising and don't think about it mm-hmm. I guarantee you could not tell that was a miniature mm-hmm. it looks so good <laughs> it's, oh yeah it's just yeah. a lot of fun um, what, else? Oh, what was I trying to think of as well um, there's no thinking about the characters and the miniatures and obviously what you mentioned beforehand there's no, there's no good guys in the movie. They're it's all true, mercs, actually. all yeah. horrible people. So you've got the guy who's built the ship only to try and get the insurance money, mm. trying to do the old insurance fraud, the old, the old Kansas City <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> you've got, uh, you've got the mercs, uh, and then you've got the people who are doing like the, the the boat tours for people, not to go whale watching, but you know, just escort some crims to go and do a crime. Crims, um, crims to do crimes. <laughs> um, and what I liked as well is like the, the, the Anthony Held, who plays like the, the the engineer or the guy that built the ship. Mm. Um, they do that thing that they do quite well in, I think it's John Woo movies, where the bad guy wears the white jacket. Yes. Yeah. Because um, you think, oh, back at the bad guy's always going to wear black. With the wear the, the wear the white jacket, and I go, oh, right, you think he's good? Mm. No, he's not. He's a complete bastard <laughs> yes. and hundreds possibly thousands of people died because he didn't do the numbers because it's Kevin J O'Connor because you screwed up the math <laughs> yeah yeah. that's a good point I never even noticed because the, the main characters that you assume are the good guys mm-hmm. they're not really they're kind of in it for themselves they, they took a job not knowing or caring and even when they did find out that there was there was ammunition and guns on the ship there's just a couple of raised eyebrows and they continue Mm-hmm. They don't give a shit. They're like, oh, well, okay. We probably should have asked for more money. <laughs> <laughs> what, oh, what else was going to say? There was a, there's another aspect of it that I really, really enjoyed was um, it is entirely gone. But yeah, it, I like the fact that the, the, the initial group that you meet, that they're very likable. Oh, yeah. And the mercs, as much as the the pricks and everything else, you, you kind of feel bad for them whenever they're getting picked off. Because all yeah. they're there is to do is to kind of do a job, not necessarily harm anybody, but get what they're after, which is to make sure that the that the ship goes down. Mm. Um, so everybody's everybody's the bad guy, but everybody's kind of the good guy to a certain extent, except for Wes Studi, who's the the, the captain. The co- he yeah. tries to shoot Kevin J. O'Kenner. <laughs> he's, he's like, for me, tell me if I'm wrong. I think he was kind of channeling Bobcat Goldthwait. I guess yeah, I can see yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can re- see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's he's kind of like the guy who gets the the beautiful girl, but then she's. I I think for me, she she dies solely because she's trying to blowtorch in water. <laughs> she's clearly yeah. not. She's not welding or blowtorching anything. 
on the side of a ship which is filled with water, <laughs> which has just arrived in. She's like, I'm just going to blowtorch this. Water. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Eh, why not? Fuck it. I want to look busy in front of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but do this, they won't ask me to do anything else, and you know, yeah. go and shoot some people. I, uh, one thing that I do quite like is they never explain why that creature's there. The, the title kind of does. It's it, a deep rising. There's something has come from the deep. It doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's fun. It's, I think it's there's no hidden depths to the movie. Yeah. There's loads of little references for those who wish to find them or for people just to sit and watch the movie. But I absolutely adore the movie and just think it's loads of fun. Oh, yeah, and same. the ending of the movie as well, not to kind of ruin it for anybody, kind of set up. But I want, I want to see what happens next. Yeah. <laughs> generally, some of the best movies end with like, ah, yeah. So that there's potentially more. So like out of the out of the flying pan into the fire. Yeah, and that that end sting again. I won't mention it because we have we are ruining films as you do with reviews. But for something like this, the very end stings. Yeah, it's worth it, and it, it's it's so good. If they were to do like a, a Deep Rising two now and continue on, you can't really continue on in exactly the same way because the the characters have aged in a matter of seconds to them, but <laughs> decades. Oh, I hate how old I am. But, uh, I would no. love, I would love if it was like the guy who played Tattoo, and then the guy <laughs> that played uh, <laughs> Welcome to Fantasia. <laughs> yeah, I never knew the, for the years until I. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so the two things that you just referenced there I completely forgot about is I never knew the guy who plays Khan was also the guy who oh, hosted yeah. Fantasy Island. I just yeah. go like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's so clever. I never, I never realised He's that. in a Planet of the Apes as well. He's in yes. part three or four, uh, whichever one's mm-hmm. set in present day. 80s. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot that that was him because he's quite a charismatic villain. But he's also quite a charismatic villain to a certain extent in Fantasy, yeah. in Fantasy Island. <laughs> but there's a reference to Fantasy Island with Samuel L. Jackson in Deep Blue Sea. Because uh, I think it's Sandra Burroughs and Samuel L. Jackson are flying the plane towards mm. the um, the floating research centre. And then Samuel L. Jackson, the plane, boss, the plane. It's just like, oh, <laughs> Does he? I'm, so, I'm so old. Being <laughs> references. <laughs> I get that one. Nice. <laughs> I love. Have you ever seen the? Because Samuel L. Jackson, whenever he does movies, he also does the lines for the edited versions for airplanes. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you not? Have you? Have you not seen this? Uh, S- snakes on movie? a plane or something. <laughs> I'm sick of these monkey fighting snakes on this monkey f- <laughs> on this n- this n- Monday nine to five plane, and he's just done it. And there's a couple of ones that they did for like the Big Lebowski. Oh god! Instead of instead of oh, this is what happens when you fuck a guy in the ass. He's like cocking the gun. He's like fucking. <laughs> this is edited in like the airplane version. Where they go, and this is what happens when you mess with a guy in the Alps. <laughs> Just going, what? <laughs> oh, that's class. But oh, yeah, I, um... I love the way they edit in sort of like the airplane <laughs> version. Yeah, it's like uh, oh, what's it? Uh, Yippee ki yay, melon farmer. Is that what he says? <laughs> you became melon farmer. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> My crops. Oh, well, I've noticed in the time though we're going to have to pull in um, to give a verdict. Your, I'm, I'm just trying to your, think mm, what what the the out of ten can be. Uh, I would say out of ten dead mercs, blood, so- blood sodden <laughs> shit, blood sodden shitters. <laughs> out of ten blood sh- sodden shitters. What would you give the movie? You know what? I think out of out of ten, I can't give it a ten out of ten because that would then undermine the fact that this is an underdog of a of a of a, of a movie. I guess. So yeah. I I would probably say eight out of ten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say closer, but if you give it like a nine, then you're saying it's like almost perfect. And then if you said ten, it's 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 a perfect movie. Yeah. And it does have. I don't want to say issues, but I don't. I don't want it to be ten out of ten. I want it to be the underdog. I want it to be like the Rocky of the monster yeah. movie. So I wanted to give it like an eight out of ten or a seven out of ten. Seven yeah. and a half out of ten. <laughs> blood sodden shitters. Is I'm gonna say shitters. I mean the toilets. I don't mean like yeah, yeah. Somebody's <laughs> somebody's sphincter. Um, but yeah, oh, that's oh, that's oh. what I want. Is the, <laughs> but, oh. 
But yeah, that's I, a seven and a half. Um, I, I would probably agree. I'd, I'd give it. I was going to say eight, to be honest with you, for just pure entertainment. As you say, uh, there's there's no message. There is absolutely rewatchability because after having watched it, I watched it a few weeks ago now, um, mm-hmm. prior to this show, or mm-hmm. reading a bit. I almost wanted to watch it again just the other day because mm-hmm. it's just purely. It's like the Mummy. You can watch that pretty much bi-weekly, as in two weeks, not not twice a week. Uh, <laughs> But because it's just fun and because the characters don't matter and you're not being lectured at about how shit the world is or something <laughs> um, or capitalism there's just a rich guy who's got a stupid plan, some ragtag heroes and a monster I'm in so yeah, I it's, it's, oh, yeah. oh, it's definitely it's just so much fun like, it, it is, you could watch it all the time and my, my, my other friend to keep on name dropping here nobody famous though like yourself <laughs> you met so many people I've only met Trevor McDonald, Joanna Lumley, and Orlando nice. Bloom, but that's about it. But they were nice. all very short, brief encounters. Mm. Um, but yeah, a um, friend Kelly, if you guys listen to this, it, we, we talked about this and they probably, not at necessarily great length, but we just both looked and going, Deep Rising, should we watch it now? And I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> it's probably one of those films that if it came on TV, I'd, I'd want to watch it, you know. Up, just because up, it's yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's the sort of thing it's that good. if you catch halfway through, you still enjoy it as much. Right. You go, oh, it's a, it's a bit where money, 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 and then woof, <laughs> axe to the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's dead. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's a, a fun underdog monster movie, and I think it it deserves more love. Or maybe maybe I don't want loads of people to know about it. Yeah, the so, fact that it's it's like a little a little secret, a little something. Sh- <laughs> it's like instead of going, oh, if you got anything like. You go to a shop and you're going, oh, have you got the such and such? I've got some stuff around the back. I've got some deep rising. I like you. (laughs) Do you want some some deep rising? Yeah, no problem. It does sound like it's potentially (laughs) a Channel 5 soft (laughs) porno as well. Deep rising. (laughs) Wow. wow. (laughs) (laughs) From West Texas. (laughs) Deep, deep (laughs) rising. It's sort of like. So like Joe jo Exotic. <laughs> oh but yeah, God, I mean that's deep rising. <laughs> <laughs> make you feel good. <laughs> but yeah, was it's solid. Monster, was that Monsters Ball reference? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I make you feel good. Make, make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But yeah, yeah it's it so, <laughs> solid. <laughs> uh, like uh, fifteen and a half out of twenty, if my maths is correct. I, I, I you know what? He's gonna nod and smile because I. Yeah. I've done run out of fingers and thumbs and toes. <laughs> I only got them. two on my <laughs> chest. I lost them to the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> they got you on the toilet. That's what it was. You could, the toilet. I'm quite on the toilet. On the on the toilet. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a phenomenal choice. And it, 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 although it it's it sounds like it's quite a low score compared to some of the other ones we've seen, it's not. It, it's. On pure entertainment alone, it's it's smashed it, and it is in my top ten kaiju movies because it absolutely is one. Because t- correct me if I'm wrong. Before we kind of wrap this up, like I think for me personally, say the likes of The Shining, mm-hmm. and this is this is not me in any way, shape, or form being negative towards The Shining. I think you've almost got to set time aside to watch The Shining. Yeah, because you have you to just, concentrate. <laughs> you do because yeah. you've got to absorb all that stuff that Kubrick's had laid out for you, all the little breadcrumbs, and then you take away something different every time you watch it. Yeah. Or, or the same depending on your mindset etc but for this one like I wouldn't have to worry about oh just chuck on Deep Rising even though it's possibly like two like 25-30 minutes shorter yeah. it's just a blast it's just it's over and you yeah. just enjoyed yourself and you just you just let it wash over you and you're, you're in for the ride it's, it's a, and as much as it sounds like a a cliche it's a roller coaster. it actually it there's, there's nothing great. wasted there's no scenes I think wasted it's just fucking we're in, there's a monster, everybody's dead, we've got some mercs, and then it's just, it's all a fun ride from there. There's no bits where it kind of lulls. It explains what the monster is, and it's sort of a brief, sort of relatively quiet moment, and then the rest of it just, you're on for the, you're in for yeah. it, you care about them as much as they're all pricks in it. It's, yeah. It does feel like, Williams. well, yeah, <laughs> it does feel like they, they get all the elements, and they tell you them, and it, it's brief, but enough for you to understand them. Mm-hmm. Tell you the scenario, tell the antagonist, and then go, right, play, and it just yeah. lets the scene play out. 
and it's amazing. And honestly, I, I love it. So to get <laughs> such a high score on just pure entertainment without any artistic, and it does have artistic merit, that sounds awful, but without any artistic message to convey to your audience, because it isn't, there isn't really one except that rich guys can I'm, be dicks sometimes. But I don't think that's that's the point. I don't think... Yeah. I exactly. don't think that I think that was the director's intention. I want to make a, th- a fun thrill ride. Oh, one last factoid before we go: mm-hmm. they originally wanted Harrison Ford to play the character um, that Tree Williams plays, Ooh. <laughs> and then they couldn't get Harrison Ford, so the budget got slashed. And I think that is for the betterment of the movie. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't want a higher budget, higher concept. I'd say, and I don't want to use the, the term better cast because I think the cast is phenomenal and, and yeah. suits the, fits the bill really, really well. I wouldn't want like a load of like A-list celebrities or, or people sort of like sort of a load of really good top-end yeah. supporting characters in it. I want these guys in it and the film's better for that. And I like the fact that they probably had to be more creative with yeah. a lesser budget. And it's just loads of fun. Oh, yeah. I, I really, really do enjoy it. And it's highly, highly recommended if you have seen it. Let us know what your your thoughts are on mm-hmm. at podcast in the back seat. That is our Instagram page. Just this coming through. <laughs> Incoming message. <laughs> but yeah, if if you haven't seen it, check it out. As mentioned before, it is on Disney Channel Plus um, under their star, whatever it is. Worth a try. But uh, I think next week's episode was it was one of the in betwixt the cheeks episodes where the, we've talked the, about the, the betwixt um, <laughs> makes me makes me really want a chocolatey biscuit with caramel and and, and uh, <laughs> makes wa- me think wa- like a bum <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> so there's two types of people <laughs> in the world. <laughs> but yeah, I want to thank everyone for for listening to this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been an absolute blast, and do check it out. Tune in yeah. next time. We're releasing these on Fridays, so mm-hmm. I want to I want to try and release them around about seven pm ish, as well. So if you are counting right down time. those minutes, <laughs> yeah, you know when to look out for now because we've got a bit of a, a thing going, which is quite mm-hmm. nice. And thank you very much for listening to my sexy, sexy voice. Good night. And my less sexy voice, but uh, I don't know. It's quite calm and apparently. <laughs> it's sexy and hard. <laughs> it's, it's loved and come to us it's, it's your siren song uh, but yeah thank you very much for listening I, I've enjoyed myself and hopefully you have as well Matt um, and uh, enjoy your stomach pounder and coke <laughs>